now they're up 1-0 after taking a game on the road against the Sixers. We'll have all the presser coverage, analysis highlights, and more. Casey Stern, B. Wood, Steve Smith, otherwise known as Smitty. Of course, our Friday Night Live crew. I, I want to start over, Archie, because, Smitty, I'll start with you. We've talked about this for years, the three of us on this set. Kenny Atkinson not getting enough credit for the culture that he has built, Sean Marks and the whole group, over three years. You kind of saw all of that, I know it's only a game, but play out in the way they played this game tonight, didn't we? You know what? They were the smarter team. They looked together. Their game plan came out. Only one thing I thought Kenny Atkinson and that group didn't execute well. I thought they took, took Jared Allen out a little quicker, B. Wood. But other than that, the game plan they had, Jared Dudley, the way he played, and then Karis LeVert and Spencer Dinwiddie off the bench was fantastic. Ed Davis, who I thought was the key to the game, they played the right kind of game. Even if they are lost, you can go in the locker room and say we played the right way. The game plan was terrific. And on the other side of the Philadelphia 76ers, there's so much going wrong, we got a long time to talk about it. Oh, we got a long show. You may perhaps be texting somebody on your cell phone right now, all the things that we're saying. I should be looking. Or maybe you're texting Joel Embiid during a game. Who knows? We'll get into that. I, I want to, just from an individual standpoint, and we'll talk a lot about Levert, but I want to talk about D'Angelo Russell at the top here because – we talk about redemption, what he went through with L.A. Brandon, he probably had to go through, right? right? To then resurface to what he's become now. But the first half, first playoff game, rough start, right? Money on the line in free agency. To come out in the second half, put up 17 points, and to lead this team, what did you see from Russell in that second half? I saw a player that's developing and growing up right before our eyes. D'Angelo Russell, he is no longer the same kid that he was coming into this league or when he was in L.A. He's now maturing into a true professional. That's why he's having the year he's had. That's why he had the type of game he had today. Started off struggling, and it looked like maybe the moment was a little bit too big for him. Maybe he was nerved calmed himself down, continued to be aggressive, and really led this team Really led this team in the second half. And what he did, he really destroyed the 76 <laughs> in the mid-range. Right here, you see him getting down the lane. Mm. Smitty, you see him putting a little bit of jelly on that mm -hmm. finger roll right there at the end. Now he comes off of a great screen set by Ed Davis, gets into the mid-range. Boban way too far back in the screen and roll. D'Angelo takes advantage again. And now, D'Angelo's going to get the ball again. Wait, wait, oh, try to get him into his space. Nice quick drive right. Once again, he sees Boban is not going to come to him. Takes the contact and one. D'Angelo Russell had himself a ball game. Uh, he was very poised. Even though he started off rough, he didn't let that deter him. And that's what you want from your best players. They start off rough, doesn't rattle them. They continue to play. They continue to play good basketball. That's what he did today. We'll talk as we go along from the net side, guys, about Levert and Dinwiddie. And we discussed it's going to be a factor you win in the playoffs, right? You think about those big buckets. They have three guys who can create and do it themselves. Doing it themselves, though, was the story, unfortunately, for Philly's side most of this game. And that self, that person, was Jimmy Butler. We were 23 in the first half, Smitty, including that three at the buzzer. Without him, they could have been down by 30, really going into the third quarter. Give us a sense of the good and bad of that. Jimmy steps up, has his best game maybe as a sixer in the best spot. But he kind of had to to keep him in it. Why? Well, the reason why was no one else playing the game the right way. And what I mean by that, just going out and playing extremely hard. We look at the numbers. Well, first thing I look at the numbers for Jimmy Butler, what he did was he had about five or six offensive rebounds in that first half. And that kept him in it. I mean, he played extremely hard. Defensively, you know what he's going to bring. But I like that he just turned on the switch and said, MB, you're not scoring. Ben Simmons, you're not making winning plays. Tobias Harris. We haven't got you in the offense. I'm going to come out here and just put you guys on my back on both ends. I love the way he played. He can dress the way he wants to before he wants to because I love the way he came out and played B. Wood. Those offensive rebounds, those are energy and just passion plays from Jimmy Butler. Yeah, and that's what uh, – more. they need more guys that were willing to go out there and play like Jimmy Butler and go out there and just put it all on the line. And uh, Jimmy's been very criticized this season, um, but – this playoff shows what Jimmy's about. He's about playing hard. He's about going out there, doing the tough things. And there was a time in this game where it didn't look like anybody wanted it except for Jimmy Butler. More guys need to figure out uh, how to get on his level and mimic his toughness. Let's uh, talk about TGI Fridays and what's hot. Because uh, it was served up today from Jimmy Butler, unfortunately. Not so much from most others. Not shown here was Boban, who was, really did everything he could. He was fantastic mm -hmm. in this game. As good a game as we've seen from him. But I, I want to start and let's focus on Embiid first because I want to hit Embiid and Simmons. Uh, from an Embiid standpoint, and, and B, what I'll start with you just from a big side, right? 
If you have an injury like Embiid has, right. you may be limited. So I understand that. But how are you both watching him take threes, pump fake on three consecutive possessions at one point in the first quarter, taking threes, rather than when you've got a Jared Allen early in foul trouble, even when he was sitting out there with two, punish him in the post the way we know Embiid could with this Nets team? I don't care if it's just this one game or if it's just the whole playoff series. Uh, the Philadelphia 76ers have to understand the right way to use Joel Embiid, and Joel Embiid has to understand that as well. Um, and it all comes down to scoring in the paint. He is the biggest, baddest center in all of the NBA. Sorry, DeMarcus Cousins, but that's where Embiid sure. is right yeah. now. But he didn't dominate the paint today. And I know the knee might have been a little bit hurt, but for the minutes that he could give this team, he needs to start in the paint. Uh, going to work, showing the excellent footwork, the jump hooks, the turnaround jumpers, do the tough things first inside, and then you go outside. But for MB to take five threes out of his 15 shots, I think that's too many for him. He's too good a basketball player inside. His three should come maybe sometimes as a result of ball movement, but he shouldn't just start out on the perimeter as much. I want to see him use more inside. And, Smitty, we talked about this. When Jared Allen picked up his second foul, there was 10 minutes left in the first quarter. They should have been going to Embiid every single play until Jared Allen fouled out of that game. And even when Ed Davis was on mm -hmm. Embiid, you could see this, the, the huge size advantage. Embiid looked like he had about three to four inches and, and 30 to 40 pounds on Ed Davis. So they, the 76ers did not take advantage of the, the, the match that they had tonight with Embiid. He is a problem inside. I do not think he was used correctly. That's something that Brett Brown is going to have to address. Brendan, you said it best. This is on Joel Embiid first. No, first of all, this is on Brett Brown. This is your guy. You got to understand Jared Allen had two fouls. You call a timeout. If they're going to keep him in, which I thought – they made a mistake yeah. of keeping him in. It was odd, yes. We're going to just straight post him. You can turn five, slip five, whatever you get on the block. The reason why is I'm saying, B. Woods, you're getting down there because if you get double, you get Tobias Harris easy right. shots. You get Ben Simmons easy plays. Even Ben Simmons, they got to have the relationship where I can say, B. Wood, I need you down the block. And I don't need you taking quick shots unless you have a quick move that you can make. I want you to probe, probe till you draw the double. We get this ball moving around. We control the pace and tempo. They didn't do that. They let them off the hook. And you can see numbers wise, he had 15 rebounds. He had five blocks, but he could have more impact against other guys. Easier jump shots. I, and, you know, look, how much of that is on a point guard? Now, I understand we're not talking about a, a traditional point guard when you look at the size of Ben Simmons. And we've talked about that. Do they need one or not? Mm. But at one point, Smitty, I said to you, in the third quarter, have we heard it mentioned? It was 20 minutes. We looked up the stats, and we're midway through the third quarter of this game. He had two points, two assists, hadn't done anything. Not demonstrative, not aggressive. He's very vocal often about his own game. I know he's uber confident, but he's got to be way better than this, right? Yeah, and I think for him is you help a young guy out there. This is where your coaching staff, everybody on that coaching staff, and Jimmy Butler, guys have been around. You understand the game and where our advantage is. Your advantage is with Joel Embiid, with basically anybody, mm -hmm. especially if Jared Allen has two fouls. And I love Ed Davis, but he's still too small. <clears throat> and Jared Dudley came in at the five. Played There's well. no way yeah. we're going to let Jared Dudley off the hook at the five. Even with Boban, I would have been posting up a little bit more. That's the reason why you can control the pace, control the tempo, because if it's an up-and-down game, advantage nets all the way if you want to run. Hey, Some, yeah, go ahead, Bigel. Yeah. This is something I think that's unfortunate to a certain degree when we're okay. talking about Ben Simmons, but it's something that I saw at times last year in the playoffs, and I'm seeing it this year. Ben Simmons is going to continue to have games like this, and he's going to continue to somewhat be exposed to a certain degree in the playoffs if he doesn't develop some substance and some meat to his game. You look at the stat sheet, okay, he was four for nine, nine points, three assists, one of five from the free throw line. If he continues to shoot that poorly from the free throw line, if he continues to have no mid-range game to speak of, and he, he continues to not be able to shoot the ball from the three-point line, he's going to be exposed in the playoffs. Because in the playoffs, teams expose your weaknesses. And Ben Simmons has way too many weaknesses at this point to be considered an elite player. He's a very good player, and he's an all-star. But in the offseason, I don't know how far Philly's going to go. Who knows? They could make it all the way to the NBA Finals. But in the offseason, to get the best out of himself, He's going to have to address at least one to two of these holes in his game to go from being all-star to superstar because we're talking about a guy with superstar ability that is not close to that yet because there's major deficiencies in his game that he has not addressed. And I think to you, B. Will, what you're saying is totally right, but I think in the interim right now, if you are Brett Brown, you got to take him off the ball sometime. Make play traditional power forward. Now, if you get the rebound, you push. Other than that, i got to have you in a dunker spot. Oof. 
I got, I got to take the ball out of his hand. <laughs> but what can he do? <laughs> reason Smitty? why be what is he going to do without the ball? What can he do? That's that's what does that's most power forwards do without the basketball? Rebound. Th- th- say it again. Rebound. Okay, but he thinks he's a point guard. That's what I just said. We got to win a series. <laughs> We're not talking about what's best for you and what his capabilities are. He's a phenomenal pass. He's an unbelievable guy on the break. In playoff basketball, the game slows down. They are backing up from way from here. Guards are backing up from him. You can't.